Welcome into the Grizzly Coaches Show. Final week of February. We are counting down to Boise and officially in crunch time. Just a couple of games left in the regular season. Four on the conference schedule for the Grizzlies. Next up, Idaho State this weekend on the road. Grizzlies have won 18 in a row against the Bengals. We'll see if that streak can continue. Tough weekend for the team. 90 to 76 losses to Eastern Washington coming in now at 9 and 12. But again, schedule sets up for hopefully a late season run here as we welcome in the coaching staff, head coach Travis DeGear, associate head coach Chris Cobb, assistant coaches Jay Flores and Zach Payne. First off, thanks for joining us, guys. And Coach Secure, first question always is your takeaways from the weekend. Uh, a bit of a rough one. The game started out where Eastern was obviously ready to go. But your main takeaways after a couple of days of letting both games digest a bit. Uh, ability to handle adversity, uh, mental toughness are always things that come up in conversation when building a program or sustaining a program. And we get an opportunity this week to show where we're at in regards to those two things. Um, Tough matchup, a team that's that's playing very good basketball right now uh, on a long win streak. And uh, timing is everything. Sometimes you can run into a team at the wrong time. And so for us, the most important thing is today and tomorrow and make the most of the, the next opportunity we have in front of us and see what happens going into the conference tournament. Coach, secure the, those 40 minutes are a bit deceiving because, again, it was maybe the first 10 minutes of the game where Easter blitzed and then your team settled in a little bit. Was there any common themes maybe that you saw from the weekend when you looked on film just from the start of it? Or it's really tough when a team makes 14 in a row as sometimes there's just nothing you can do with how fire they were on. But was there common themes maybe that you saw from the beginnings of both games? Well, the easy explanation is they made shots we didn't. Um, but I, I just think they, they, went into, they went into those two games knowing they were playing for championship. Uh, opportunity to raise a banner. Uh, we've been the team that's been in the way uh, for the last couple of years, and, and it was an incredible opportunity that they were excited for. They had a lot of guys that, that were experienced in that situation, and they had a revenge factor. Um, and, and so they had a lot to look forward to with momentum going into the game, um, and, and they responded very well. So I wouldn't take anything away from that team. Um, I, I think Saturday, uh, I thought our guys were were energetic and, and and prepared to compete. I think Bannon's two quick fouls in the first possession of the game took us out of everything that we planned on doing on both sides of the ball. And uh, we ended up playing uh, on both sides, offensively and defensively, in some ways that we were ne not necessarily prepared to do early in the game. A lot of things we wanted to run off in, we couldn't run because we went to a small lineup so quick. Beginning in the fall of 2021, the new location of the Grizzly Coaches Show will be at Finn, located at the Doubletree by Hilton on the shore of the Clark Fork River. Join us for great food and drink and the Finn's Pizza, freshly made in their wood-fired oven. Talking Grizzly basketball against Eastern Washington, Coach Cobb. I mean, one of the first observations when you walked in the gym or when you just started, saw the game be tipped was just the energy that Eastern Washington was able to provide. How much did you guys maybe feel that throughout that? It just felt like a rivalry to me. Again, we missed the Montana State games, the Weber games with no crowd. That was, it just felt like a rivalry. What was it like uh, maybe pregame and during the game, obviously for a very heated 80 minutes of basketball? Ooh, right. Uh, a lot of things come to mind when you ask that. I think Rivalry, energetic, um, you know, I think there's a lot of things that come into it. We have a, a lot of respect for them as a basketball program and what they do. Um, I think, you know, we'll be excited and ready to play them again whenever that is. Um, but, I, you know, I think for us, the thing that for the weekend that jumps out to me is that, and maybe this is something that we didn't, totally address um, going into the weekend was like, you know, when we talked about Weber, we talked about the rivalry and we talked about how intense that has been for 20 or 30 years. Right. Um, then you go and you go to tip and in all honesty, there's not really anybody that has played in that game before. Right. Like eat for them or for us. So it wasn't a great, um, I, I don't know if anybody totally knew other than when we looked across their coaching staff that the coaching staffs had been going at each other for a long time. Maybe the thing that we kind of didn't anticipate was that when we tipped the ball on Thursday and Saturday, our guys, I don't think knew how intense they probably were going to be on the basketball court um, in terms of going at us. Right. Like I think that they were very ready. They were very prepared um, and when you have not been in those games, you don't have those same emotions. Um, you know, I think we 
you work really hard, Rise, is a basketball program that not only tries to put a really good product on the court, but when we wear Montana basketball, Grizz basketball, and, and win or lose, we try to handle and conduct ourselves the right way because ultimately we are trying to train these young men to go on and be successful and handle winning, losing, adversity, uh, good times and bad times the right way. Um, and so there's a lot of things that I, I leave, you know, uh, the weekend thinking and feeling, uh, but we'll be very, very motivated uh, to play those guys again the next time we play them. And we will handle it the right way, regardless of the outcome. Well said, Coach. Jay, we'll go transition to you a little bit. When you, This is my question, I promise. We won't talk about the rest of the league, the rest of the uh, show. But as far as maybe now, if you went through the gauntlet, where would you compare maybe Eastern Weber, Southern Utah? Do you feel, um, just as far as playing those teams, Eastern Washington, Weber State more recently, um, that it's kind of a good benchmark that you know kind of what it takes as far as the two teams that are on top of the league right now? Um, but where would you maybe put Eastern in that fold after just seeing them freshly right after Weber State? I mean, you got to put them towards the top. You know, I think that a lot of this is dictated off matchups, um, who can guard who and who can't guard who, kind of stuff like that. Um, you got to give them a lot of credit. They've they have good players and they had they have a good plan. They executed it. So um, I think the emotion of the game is what what stood out the most when we played them compared to the other teams. You know, and I mean, the Southern Utah game seems like three and a half years ago at this point, and um, I think that it is really hard to gauge and, and, you know, stack rank or whatever you want to call it when you play two teams in three days and then you don't, you don't, the only time you see them is on film. Um, you know, teams get better, teams get worse. And so you got to put them at the top, towards the top, you know, one of those, uh, one of those top spots because they've earned it. Like their record says um, that they have. And I just think it will create a very interesting dynamic in the conference tournament when almost certainly there will be teams that match up for the very first time in Boise on a neutral court with limited fans to, to really see matchups and stuff like that. But yeah, I, you know, all three teams are good teams, you know, um, obviously the way we played this past weekend, I don't feel as indicative of exactly what team we are right now. Um, but uh, you got to give them credit that, that they were, they were ready to rock, and I, I was impressed with their play on the court, for sure. No doubt about it, too. It'll be interesting to see. This will be the wildest conference tournament if the Grizz somehow match up against a team like Southern Utah. The fact that it was played three to, three to four months ago, it'll be a completely different team. Zach, I'll transition to you. Coach Dekir touched on it, but a key moment in that game came in the first 51 seconds when Josh Bannon picked up those two fouls. How did you guys have to adjust on the fly, and especially with how Josh is playing right now, a key piece in what you want to do? Did it affect you more maybe offensively, defensively, or just kind of take me through the inner workings of Josh Bannon being out, how it messed up the rotation, and just kind of everything in between there. Offensively and defensively, a lot of what we were planning to do, um, he's a big he's a big part of just because he's so versatile on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, he's he's coming around offensively, and um, you know, because he's because he's been working at it really hard, and so he's playing a lot better on that end. And you can do a lot of different things with him, both inside and outside. And then defensively, he's one of our most versatile defensive players. And so, and I think when you play against Eastern Washington. You know, they have a lot of interchangeable pieces. It's one of the reasons they're really hard to guard. And when you lose a versatile defender, it makes it a lot tougher. Um, and so when he picks up two fouls in the first possession, it, it, throws, it throws things for a whack, uh, you know, for a, loop, for a loop quite a bit. But I thought he did a good job responding and came back in the first half and didn't pick up his third foul and then remained aggressive and offensively and played within the plan. So uh, you got to give credit to JB on that. And But, yeah, it threw, it threw things for a loop. But, hey, that's what happens. Um, there's going to be adversity in every single game. And uh, us as a staff and the other guys, when, when somebody important to the plan uh, gets taken out, you got you got to adjust and, and, and you got to pick up pieces. It's called next man up for a reason. Um, so we'll be better. We'll be better about that moving forward. The Grizz home team is a group of locally owned businesses that support the Grizz. Your official home team members are direct source, great floors, static solar, lens insulation, and true green lawn care services. Coach Dekir, we'll go back to you. We get to this point of the year, right, where 
freshmen might become sophomores. You started three freshmen in the game on Saturday. You're one of just 10 teams in the country now that have started three freshmen in the same game. And you will break the school record this weekend for more starts by freshmen this year compared to last year. So with that all being said, coach, is it this the point of the year where freshmen do become sophomores or where you can see the growth again, might be inconsistent throughout the course, but is this the point where freshmen become sophomores? You hope so. Um, that that's the goal of having them in in the lineup and, and getting them as much experience as we have gotten them throughout the year. We've kind of thrown them out there a little sooner than we planned, though. And and so you have to be aware of not wearing them down. Um, and and that's the question: Are they going to be better? Or are they going to be exhausted? That we're not sure of. Um, but they they are more experienced. They are more confident. Um, and, and I think that they are in position to make that jump. Uh, we're, what we're trying to do right now is make sure that they've saved up enough energy to finish that. Big time run coming up towards the end of the year, talking with the men's basketball staff, breaking down Eastern Washington, get ready to look forward to Idaho State this weekend, Thursday at 7 o'clock in Pocatello, Saturday a bit earlier of a tip at 11 a.m. Coach DeCare, on, on the note of just emotion in an empty arena, I guess I just felt it more this last weekend. What was it like from your perspective just as far as going back and forth, trying to bring that emotion in. And just, I mean, it's been 20 games now of just trying to create your own energy. How difficult is that in the long scheme of everything? And just your thoughts on the emotion in an empty arena just feels so much different against those rivals. Well, you know, that's a long answer you're going to get here. But this weekend was different because there's a different type of energy that that team brings. And what Coach Cobb was alluding to is the sideline energy. Um, you know, we played them for championship, you know, a few years back and, and, and kind of experienced the same thing. And we found ourselves down at halftime. And a lot of it had to do with things that took place before the game started. Coaches on the floor during warmups, uh, communicating with players during warmups, screaming at players on the sidelines during games. Those types of things that, that guys aren't necessarily used to, or if they are, they probably hadn't experienced it since an AAU game in high school. Um, and that was the thing I think we left out because under normal circumstances, when you have a crowd and you're at home or you're in their gym, um, it's not as overwhelming as it is in a quiet or empty gym at, their, at, at a conference tournament. And so in Reno, in Boise, and right now during the pandemic, that played a major role in the game. But when you play in their gym or our gym during a regular year, there's another crowd and there's a different type of energy, if that makes sense to you. Um, for us, and, and I think even teams like Weber that have well-attended games, there's a different type of energy and support that your crowd gives you, uh, which we are lacking right now. We don't have that group behind us for 14 or 15 home games that we normally would have. Um, and then on the road, we're playing in gyms that normally are quiet, that are pumping in crowd noise. And, it, and, and so it impacts your ability to communicate. So there's kind of two tales where it's, it's, it's overboard on the road and it's nowhere near what we're used to at home. It makes it a little different, but at the end of the day, we're still playing basketball, the ball goes in the air. It's not an excuse, it's just explaining the difference. Uh, from this year to in the other years. And it's certainly been different too. That's a great point. This home te this home crowd for the Grizzlies certainly is being missed this year. Northwestern Energy is committed to helping small businesses navigate COVID-19. Learn more at NorthwesternEnergy.com. Let's talk about those three freshmen that are breaking school records here with a couple more starts this weekend. Coach Cobb, will go to you. We've touched on Josh Bannon the last couple of weeks, right? The improvement has been vast. It has been so nice to see and probably one of the best stories that comes out of this team throughout the course of the year. Four straight and double figures. I want to talk to you more about Confidence in the jump shot, because now it looks silky smooth. He's got that high arc behind it. How much of development has that been? Just the, the patience that Josh Bannon has maybe instilled in himself and had to go through this year um, when you've seen it firsthand every day, but maybe just on the jump shot or his offense coming around, Coach, your thoughts? Well, you should be asking the big show down there. I call I call <laughs> Coach Payne the big show because uh, <laughs> the big show is putting in a lot of hours with him getting in the gym, and I, I think part of it's just it's just really confidence. You know, I think – uh, Josh's evolution over the course of the season is um, is pretty simple, really, when you think about it. Like, 
you know, he was really good here in the fall uh, and, and started off really good at USC. And I think when we went to Southern Utah, I think just the physicality of the game uh, really kind of caught him off guard. And he's someone that, you know, I think needs confidence and needs rhythm to, to, and, 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 and playing consistently uh, to feel good. And I think in such a weird year, he's so hard on himself that a bad game, a bad practice, you go home and you go kind of sit in your apartment and you think about it and then you show up and you kind of get in quicksand a little bit, right. Where you're, you're trying to just get through it and, and figure it out. And uh, to me, he's, he's a really good player. He's a phenomenal competitor. Um, and so you see the, the, the work that he's putting in off, you know, outside of practice and outside of games uh, really kind of, you know, showing through, uh, on game night. And so uh, the success that he's had against, you know, Weber and Eastern isn't shocking. He really competes well. Um, and I think it's only going to continue to improve and get better uh, as he gets more comfortable with just the physicality and the style of, style of play over here. Very worth noting too, that he had those performances against the two best teams right now in the league. So even more so impressive. Jay, we'll go to you and talk about Robbie Beasley in the sense of his weekend, career high 25 at Cheney. But I think the big maybe step forward was his performance on Saturday. You look at the numbers for him between Thursday and Saturday, they've been drastically different for him to maybe get through that hurdle on Saturday. Is that a sign of taking the next step as far as consistency? I think that's the name of the word, right? With this team this year and with the freshmen in general, but how are you seeing Robbie Beasley be more consistent on a daily basis and your thoughts on his two game performance over the weekend? I, I think for sure. I think it's a huge step. Um, you know, he, he had been trying to put two games together on one weekend and we just played the team at first place in the conference. And I thought he, um, you know, exerted himself in an emotional game and in a, in a competitive game, he stepped up and, and I felt like, was like, all right, like, let's, let's, let's do this. Like, let's, let's roll up our sleeves and try to make something happen. And I think, uh, you know, with all these guys, when we're when you're young, you try to get, you know, consistency is what makes you good. These guys have all shown signs that they can do it. And I think one of the reasons that we have a lot of faith in the younger guys, but specifically uh, Robbie, you know, um, is that his his habits and his approach on the day to day is much more mature than a, than a freshman normally is. And we say, are these freshmen turning to sophomores? Well, yeah, you know, he he got a little bit of a late start because of his injury and he didn't get time until like right before Christmas but I think that now he's kind of catching a little bit of a, you know knock on wood catching a little bit of a rhythm um, due to the fact that day in and day out he is doing the things on and off the court that um, makes makes four successful players in our program you know I'm in, in a few minutes here I'm about to go down and rebound for him and he's going to make make some shots and I we know he's going to do all turn all of his assignments in and just be where he needs to be when he needs to be there and I think that when you continuously do that day after day after day during rough patches or when you are not getting the results that you necessarily want right away, eventually it all evens out. And I think that that was a bit of um, what we saw this past weekend. And, and I do think that in big moments, I think he's not afraid. Like I think he, he gets revved up in those moments and that's a special quality for any player to have, but specifically for a freshman in an environment that was a very emotional environment and I felt like it brought the best out of him because that's kind of where he thrives. Cannot wait to see him play in front of a crowd. That will be a big time X factor too. And I decided to just mix it up. I probably should ask Zach about Bannon and Cobb about the guards, anything in between. I'm mixing it up. Zach, I'm going to go to you about the point guards over the weekend. You've got two different sides of it. Cam Parker out of his first points assist, double-double, obviously on Saturday. Brandon Whitney going through a bit of a tough stretch right now. Number one, how are those guys working together through it? And uh, I guess number two, um, things that you're seeing maybe from Brandon that um, obviously you guys are helping him through here to get through the ups and downs of a freshman season. Both of those guys, the good thing is, is that they cheer for each other and they're, and they're happy for each other's success. If Brandon doesn't have a good game and Cam plays really well, Brandon's happy for him and, and vice versa. Um, and that's and that's part of being a good teammate and good culture and, and having a good team is that, you know, those guys, they both play point guard, but they can play together. And they've shown in stretches this year that they can play together really well. Uh, Brandon's just going through a very normal freshman season. Um, and the only thing that's not normal about his freshman season is that he's had some really high highs. Um, you know, he's, he's played in some, you know, he's played really well in some really important games and he's capable of that. And has, he's, you know, had had some valleys here, here and there, but. But, but he'll play better here down, down the stretch. Um, you know, we got to get in the gym with him and give him some confidence. And he's uh, – the, the tough thing is this is the first time he's going through this. Um, 
you know, playing. It's the first time he's played Eastern Washington. Last week was the first time he's played Weber and been to any of those places and, you know, just gone through a normal college season. Um, but I got a ton of confidence that Brand's going to play well this weekend. He's going to play well the next week against Idaho and he's going to hoop in the conference tournament um, because Brand's a good competitor and he's, and he's a talented basketball player. And I think it's important to him that he plays well. And so uh, it's our job to help him, you know, when, when he's not playing as well as he wants to play, it's our job to help him play better um, because he's, he's just a freshman. Um, but like I said, I got a ton of confidence. He'll play well here down the stretch. Cannot wait to see the resiliency of the freshman. That'll do it for segment number one. We'll come back on the other side of the break and start previewing the weekend ahead when the Grizz go down to Pocatello to take on Idaho State. This is the Grizz the Coaches Show from Learfield IMG College. Thinking of a career change? Wilson Logistics, the official trucking company of Grizzly Athletics, wants to see how you think our perks stack up. Visit WilsonLogistics.com, click the Apply Now link, and to look into how to get more pay and benefits with Wilson Logistics. Talking Grizzly basketball here for the first half hour. It's Idaho State Week. The Lady Grizz are at home for their final home games of this season. Let's transition and talk about it. Coach Dekir, you said after the game that despite all of this, your team is still playing better than they did in January. How important is it right now to just stick together through the day-to-day -day adversity and you talk about the growth for the team. How important is it to just stick through it through adversity? Every step you take needs to be forward. Uh, and, and that's the only way to progress. And we just continue to address that with guys collectively and individually. Um, at the end of the day, we're athletes. And, and, and athletes thrive when they have confidence. And so you just have to find ways to continue to remain confident, uh, even, even through adversity. And, and that's really what this is all about. The biggest thing is all these guys are there for each other and, and we all support one another um, and we look forward to the next opportunity. The reality is that at the end of the day, you're going to lose basketball games and what you want to do is, is win the next one and, and hope that your next opportunity presents another opportunity. And, and the ones we look forward to are the, the, the opportunity to, to avenge the losses that we've had to some of these teams in conference. Um, and, and those things that present themselves, whether that's in the next couple of weeks or, or next season, doesn't matter when it is, we know it to be there for us. So right now, man, we're just enjoying each other, trying to play the best basketball we can play. I do think we are improving. I think that our roles are becoming more defined. Um, and unfortunately, it just happens to be in February that you're kind of going through that as opposed to December and January under more, in, in most seasons. Uh, but we're enjoying this young group. Um, and, and I think that these guys are starting to play better basketball. Uh, we just look forward to the night where they all play well on the same night. And hey, maybe they're just saving that up for Boise. We all can only hope. Travis, we'll go right back to you. Your thoughts on Idaho State. I mean, on paper, they are the surprise of the league. They've won 12 of their last 15 games. They haven't played anyone in the top five of the league, and they have five non-division one wins, just throwing all that out there. But just your thoughts on this Idaho State team, maybe compared to years past and um, what the challenges are going to be coming up this weekend more confident um, than they've been in the past. They, they've had some years where they've, they've come in with a good non-conference record, um, but, but struggled in conference. And, and right now for them to have a winning record this late in the year is, is a positive and a sign of growth. I think the biggest thing is they're playing together. They, they look like a team that has better chemistry than they had last year with some of the same personnel. Uh, and when you bring guys back from the year prior and, and you're older, uh, in some of those spots, you're, you're going to play better. And, and I think that's what they're doing. Uh, they've taken advantage of, of a really good schedule. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, we've got to play really good ball to go in there and win. Um, they, they've won a lot of games at home. Uh, they've won close games at home. So they're going to have a lot of belief in, in their ability to win. And it's going to be up for us to play, to play our best basketball Thursday and Saturday. I tell you what, Coach Cobb, a big interesting factor to this is this their layoff. They didn't have a game over the last weekend, and we have seen it mixed results throughout the entire country this year on teams coming off of layoffs. You guys obviously weren't prone to that. You had to have the layoff against Montana State. What are you noticing maybe nationally or just uh, with your guys' own team about the response of squads coming off of layoffs? What do you have to be maybe aware of and just the, the pros and cons that come along with it? I'll be honest. I have no idea what other teams are doing when it comes to layoffs. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, so I, I'm not really sure with that, but I, I would say this, I mean, I think it's a health factor, right? When you, you do have long layoffs, like guys getting back, staying in shape, um, what being sick or the guys that have been sick, what that does to them and, and, and how they get integrated back. I think the biggest thing though, is just conditioning level and how that relates to injuries, right? Like we've seen a lot of, is we've started and stopped 
we've had a lot of injuries uh, and a lot of guys that have had knickknacks that kind of you don't, maybe wouldn't typically see. Um, and so I think that that's the one thing, just looking at the players kind of safety and, and health. Um, I think momentum is a big deal, right? Like I think right now for Idaho state um, and I haven't closely, closely followed like Jay has what they've been doing, but they have good momentum. Like they feel really good about where they're at as opposed to us. Right. So um, how does that affect it? Do we come out more motivated uh, because of what happened last weekend? Um, do we need to feel our way out? You know? So I think that all of these things play uh, a, a part in it. I think it's just really how we lead and, and how we can get our group revved and, and ready to go for the week. Um, you know, we've played a lot more games than they have. So does that take a toll on our body? Who knows, right? Like there's a lot of different ways you can, you can carve it up. There's excuses for everything right now, given this, there's teams that are going to play 18 games. Idaho might play 20 games in this league. Right. Um, so it, you know, who knows how all this stuff works. Teams are going to play 12 teams are going to play 20. Who knows? Let's just show up and be ready to go. Absolutely. Jay, you do have the scout on Idaho State. Maybe some things or players that come to mind. I mean, they're, they're big three with Tara Cool, Porter, Ford. Those are the three that kind of come to mind. But what stands out maybe from a style of play standpoint, they're top 10 in the country in scoring defense. That could come a lot of different ways. But just tell me the identity of this team and maybe some challenges or players to watch for this weekend. Yeah, they, they have a couple guys returning, but I thought they brought in a, a good influx of um, transfers to kind of help balance it all out. I think that stylistically, um, they play a one of the slower paces. I mean, we just coming off of Eastern and Weber State, this is as stark of a contrast as you possibly could have. I think that um, the biggest thing that stands out this year compared to last year is I think that they, they're all on the same page. And, and Coach Shakir alluded to it just in the sense that they, they look like they are playing like a team together. And Coach Cobb just said they do have a lot of confidence. Their, their record is what it is because they, they have found ways to win games. They've won close games. They've won uh, going away a couple of times. So I think that they are, um, they are a confident team and they are not going to really beat themselves. So I think that we have to be ready to go in there and uh, – be ready for just like every other weekend, be ready for a dog fight that that has not changed. And I think uh, cool has definitely made a, made another jump from last season to this season of being a scorer on a, um, you know, top four or five team right now. Like he's, he's pretty efficient for them. And then uh, I think their toughness level is really good too. Like I think uh, Robert Ford is a point guard and uh, Smaley and um, Parker, like they have a lot of guys, they don't check a lot of guys in like, that uh, are not about it. Like they're, they, they're going to, they're going to compete as hard as they possibly can. So I think that um, we got to play well two times to go in there and win. But uh, I think that the, the pace of the game will be much different than what we have been used to the last couple of weekends for sure. No plans for the weekend, pick up a copy of this week's entertainer to find out what's happening in Missoula from virtual events to live events. Entertainer is your go-to guide for Missoula arts and entertainment. You can find the entertainer every Friday in the Missoulian. It's available for free at more than 90 locations throughout Missoula, including the UM campus. Plan your weekend every week with the entertainer. couple questions left. Zach, I'll go to you. I think this might be the most important question of all. How has the response been in practice this week? And just the mode of the guys. I mean, at this point, we've talked about the grind of the season and where we're at and trying to power through it. Uh, but just as far as your guys from a mental standpoint, that's going to be important to kind of hit reset or keep going here um, towards the final couple weeks. Uh, I think the guys, you know, we, we talked after the game on Saturday and then they had Sunday off. And so yesterday was our first practice since the weekend. Uh, and I think everybody showed up in a good mood with a good attitude and, and ready to rock. Um, and so we had a good practice yesterday and we'll hit the floor and, and have a good one today. Uh, the guys' response has been good all season. We've, you know, we've been through a ton of adversity, you know, both things on and off the floor. And I think the guys that we have in the locker room have handled it well and are about the right stuff. Um, and so I got a ton of confidence that they're going to come to practice today, ready to get better. That's been their mindset um, for a while here. And I think we have gotten better. Um, and I know that it doesn't always show in our win loss record, but, but that's been the guy's mindset and it's been our mindset as a staff. And so, like I said, I got no doubts that the guys will show up at one o'clock today, ready to go, ready to have a good practice. And the Grizz will get on the bus and go to Pocatello. Final question. I always have the hard hitters to close guys, your favorite bus time activity. Coach Dakir, you get to start with this, but kind of lay out what you like doing on the bus to just relax. Do you decompress at all from no basketball? I know I, I peer in the back and I see you guys are watching film the majority of the time, but 
You got a playlist going for the bus trip. We've had plenty of them this year and a lot of success on the bus, but Coach Secure, we'll start with you. Favorite bus time activity? Well, it depends. Um, always watching some sort of film and, and preparing um, for the next game. But uh, as far as something outside of basketball, music, movies, but the thing I enjoy most is teasing Coach Cobb. <laughs> That's a no brainer. It's, it's the cheapest form of entertainment in the world to just sit in three rows behind all you guys and watching you go back and forth. Cobb, you want to chime in on that one as well? Favorite? I mean, you're watching film mostly too, but uh, give me a favorite bus time activity. Yeah, that's good. I, I was, you know, it was an easy target to probably just say that we just try to pick on Travis, um, you know, but I won't be, I won't be mean on this one here right now. Uh, yeah, I think we have fun like that. I think the bus in like the travel is the best part of the job because um, you can screw around and we we all have fun bantering. I even have fun with you and Nick, you know, going back there and hearing what uh, what you guys think about the whole deal. So I think it's fun. We got a fun group to, to travel with our our, you know, guys that help us. Anderson, Jordan and, and Ryan um, are awesome to, to be on there. I think the, the, the thing that's always the great adventure is, are we going to be able to eat what we ordered? Um, I think that's always the question with the group. Um, you know, like I've, I've been the sacrificial lamb of giving up my meal to be better for the group. And I'm sure someone's listening right now and he's, uh, he's laughing right now in the background, but I've had, you know, the most house salads you possibly can have on the road on the bus this year. And uh, so that's been my, uh, trying the different salad dressings. That would be probably it, what I'd say. Shout out to Johnny Appleseed. That's an inside joke here for everyone that's on this call. Inside joke. Uh, Jay, um, I know that uh, you love when I jinx stats and just give you long streaks. That has to be your favorite bus time activity. Yeah, well, right? you, you, just, you, just, you just did it uh, on this call. I wasn't going to say anything, but you, you love doing stuff like that. Obviously, I was going to say making fun of all these guys, uh, but uh, – you know, the one thing I wish I was better at is sleeping on the bus with a newborn at home. Like I, I would love to be able to sleep a little bit, but I'm not good at sleeping on the bus. Um, the, the one thing that we do sometimes, and it, it is not necessarily just in the league or just in the NBA, but we can get in arguments about like um, players in the league or, or in the NBA or across college basketball. Uh, I always enjoy that, especially just because Travis and uh, Coach Cobb, um, argue about everything. So then when I can just like stir the pot a little bit based on things that I don't really care about, when it's about Grizz basketball, I'll get like a little bit more involved at times. But when I can stir the pot, when it's something like, like random, that that's my favorite thing to do, I think on the bus. Well, Zach, you get the final word on this. Number one, how sick are you of hearing about the Sacramento Kings from Jay? Number two, how much do you think Travis and Chris agree? Is it like 5%, 7% and then your favorite bus time activity? Five percent would be incredibly high. I mean, it, we'd be lucky if we were at two. We'd be lucky if we were two percent. Uh, I like. I, we, we, I like. we agree ninety-five percent of the time, and most of the time, it's agreeing to disagree. There you, there go. you go. I agree with that. He's he. The weird part is our last argument. He thought the Seattle SuperSonics were the best team in the NBA. I'm like, I don't even. <laughs> I don't understand how that's even real. You know, oh, that's it, it, it's such unrealistic stuff that I'm dealing with. How could I ever agree with it? Riley, I don't want to cut Zach off here, but it could be raining outside, and one would be like, "Man, like this rain is really coming down," and the other would be like, "No, it's not." And that's just <laughs> that's just that's just how it goes. Like that's our life in a nutshell. And Zach, this is Zach's second year. This is my fifth year. Do you see my hairline right here? Like, it's it's too much. Zach is a part of it too. Don't even act like. We can't act like Zach doesn't have some intensity uh, in the big show. Yeah. Is, is, is Zach go 50-50? Does Zach go 50-50 or does he lean one way here? No, this is coming from two people that agree with each other no matter what you say. So, like, you're <laughs> on the other spectrum of this thing. Zach and Jay are like this. It's like Bert yeah, and Ernie. Riley, it's crazy. It's called working as a team. <laughs> this is so classic. I like to argue the third most. I like to argue the third most. Cobb and Travis like to argue the most then I'm probably the most confrontational after them. Jay is the least confrontational. That's just, I'm, I fall right in the middle. I fall right in the middle. I think I provide good balance on both ends. Um, conversations and arguments are by unless, far the most. Unless it's best Jay, the best you won't disagree. <laughs> that, that Travis and I agree with. Yeah, there you go. Two, here you go. There's, the, there's your 2%, Riley. 2%. They agree that Jay and I like to agree on things. Now so it's too, I, don't, like I don't agree with Jay on everything. 
So we're dealing with yeah, that. Okay, let's, let's Riley, you asked him the question. Zach pushes my buttons all the time with the Kings. Like we're on a whole like LaMelo ball versus Tyrese Halliburton thing. And Zach doesn't believe it. He just says it just to say it. And the real thing that frustrates him is I know that Russell Wilson is the best quarterback in the NFL. And that like really frustrates Zach. That's the problem. Guys, If we're going to start talking about Russell Wilson and the Seahawks, I'll sign off right now. So. Guys, that was a perfect peek inside the curtain of what uh, Grizzly basketball is like. So we appreciate you letting us in. Appreciate your time here for the last half hour. Can't wait for the road trip down to Idaho State. For Travis Takir, Chris Cobb, Zach Payne, and Jay Flores, thanks so much, guys. We'll talk Lady Grizz basketball on the other side of the break. This is the Grizzly Coaches Show from Learfield IMG College.